Hey guys, so this is Life in Croatia. I just thought I'd start like a little podcast in the Connor Bar. We've got the kids asleep and we've got the grandparents around taking care of our other child. So we thought we'd jump down here in our home clothes and just have a bit of a chat with you guys. So I thought I'd do this podcast with my wife, Christiana, here. Obviously, you've probably seen her on a few of the YouTube videos, but you don't really probably know much about her or, you know, how we met. So I thought I'd just start from there because... Uh, the adventure that we kind of took from both leaving our home soils, me from the United Kingdom and uh, Christiana from Latvia, you know, we both had to take that venture. And when we met, it was just very, very shortly before the whole moving process for both of us really happened. So it's all part of the story. So we thought we kind of include, you know, how we met in the first place and how it all sort of developed that we ended up here in Croatia. So I'd, the starting question for you, Christiana, is just like, you know, how did we first meet? Oh, let's dive in there. Um, so the very, very first meet was obviously in online as we were both from absolutely different countries. I was in Latvia back in the day, Dushan was in United Kingdom, so he just, as a typical guy in the century, I guess, <laughs> jumped on Instagram after hearing from my best friend about me and basically taking advantage, eh? <laughs> texted me and the first, very first message out of nowhere, blue sky, I have never met this guy, keep that in mind, never met him, never heard of his existence whatsoever. And the very first message he drops me is like, hi wife. And I'm just like, I'm never replying to this one, you know? <laughs> like, no, it just, and it's, especially if you come, come like from a country like Baltics, like, no, like you can't do this, you know? And yeah, so, but like my best best friend at the time was just like, no, you have to reply, like he's amazing, la la la, like giving him all the credit, you know? And yeah, and I was like, fine, like what can a small chat do? Like no harm and blah, blah. Yeah, and then we started the text and like, it, it was nice, it was fine. Like we exchanged a few chats and then it came January when I had to come to UK for my best friend's birthday. 11th of January I came in the middle of the night. But so for context here, like I knew her friend because she was in a relationship with one of my good friends from UK. Yeah. And I just so happened to be spending quite a bit of time with him and then her as well. Uh, we were going on hikes and stuff like that. And then, uh, yeah, it came up that she showed me her profile on Instagram and for some whatever whatever reason it was that was my uh, that was my first text message hi wife so it worked for me guys <laughs> <laughs> it worked for me a little relationship yeah. advice look at eh? that manifestation hey yeah, exactly. anyway I'll, I'll let her carry on the story so so yeah basically I went to UK in January after we have been like texting I don't know for a month I would say Mm, yeah, like I mentioned, it was my best friend's birthday, everything's nice, I'm super excited, and word after word, Dushan's picking up me from the airport. I'm like, hmm, okay, good one. I was absolutely frozen, like, completely frozen, like, why, you know? But okay, she had, like, a baby at the time at the home, so I was like, fine, fine. Obviously, it was on purpose, <laughs> but move on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then came the airport. I landed in Stansted Airport, which took Dushan a good three hours to get there. And then he was the lucky guy who didn't hear the word from me and all the way back home, which was awkward, like absolutely terrifying for me. Yeah, I mean, I was like, what's going on here? Like, we were so talkative over a text message and I picked her up and we've been in this car for like three hours and... We have a saying in England, it's like getting blood out of a stone, literally trying to ask her questions to keep her conversation flowing. And it was like the most minimal answers that I would get. And I was like, God, is she like not into me? Obviously, this is kind of like a big thing. Like I've literally just picked up a random person from the airport that, you know, we've only been sort of messaging. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, so. <laughs> oh, and obviously all the Baltic background and everything, like all the shyness and just like, like the stone face and everything, right? And obviously what made me so frozen is that I made like a typical blonde European coming to UK mistake. I was going to the car already like super shy, in a way excited, like what, what's going on? And obviously I had to go to the driver's seat. And that for me like was like, fuck, you know? Like why I did such a stupid mistake? Like why? Uh, but obviously, at Latvia, I'm always driving the car. I'm, I'm almost never sitting in passenger seat, so I'm just... Wait, if you went to the driver's seat to my car, then you would be in the passenger seat because it's on the other side of the road. UK yeah, car steering wheels on the other side. So. Yeah, technically, but obviously I have been to UK, I have drived in UK, and it was, I don't know, I don't know, whatever, what happened in the head at that point, but... Yeah, it just made me froze that I was so stupid that I went to the driving side and I was just like, oh God, just get me out of here, like out of here, the situation. And then, yeah, nice four hour drive. Instead of three hours, we drive four hours because Dushan took the wrong turn, obviously. Um, and then we had a fox and that was probably the only period when I said some word. Because it's like, oh, like... <laughs> yeah, it's not every day you see a fox as well. in England as well, yeah. anyway, you know. Yeah. I've seen a hunt. Okay, yeah. And then we got we got to my best friend's finally. That was Stafford at the time. Uh, first thing first, I was... I, I just needed to take the edge off. Like, well, shut up. What, well, like, you can't get out the Baltic side, right? So that was first thing first to just get that pressure down because I was so stressed because you want to make the first time perfect and it was just was just wasn't perfect, right? So yeah, hmm, that was stressful. But I was there for a week, a bit longer because as it was COVID time, I couldn't get back. If like something was ha something happened with the airport, we drive through three hours to get to know that airport. Is I think like it was closed. all to do with the like COVID test. Tests and it was closed because I needed to make it like yeah. two hours so we, before, yeah. and it so just we, like was wow. So we had to drive back, yeah. Yeah, so we had to drive back again all those three hours and la la. But after I think I found closer airport as well. But yeah, it doesn't matter about that. And but yeah. anyway, she flew back, and. At that point, it was very confusing because, you know, we both liked each other. Mm. And obviously, she was living in Latvia. I was living at UK, but I had full plans of moving to Croatia. And I was solidly on the fact that I was going to move to Croatia and nothing was going to stop me. So, like, it was it was difficult. Yeah, it was difficult. But, you oh, know, absolutely. we were... Uh, I then, from that point, drove to Croatia and... Stayed at my dad's place in Croatia for I don't know how long it was, but meanwhile we were planning our next meeting, which she invited me to Latvia, and I think it and it was start it was going to be like one week, yeah. but then we kind of like ended up extending it to like three weeks, and this is the and that was your decision. Yeah, my decision. Yeah, and uh, at this point, you know, we were then going to be spending time together in the same house pretty much all yeah, the time. Yeah, there was the time when I wasn't living too long as well, like in my new place as well. Oh, it was crazy. And obviously I didn't wait too long to meet parents. <laughs> yeah, I think it was maybe like the first few days. I think it was second day. Was it second day? Yeah, I just I dropped like, the bomb. I was like, Jesus I was like Christ. Okay, get okay. ready. This is it. She's she's then she's got me in the uh, got mm. me in there now. Like meeting the parents already. Uh, okay, but I in. have to say why. Like I couldn't. I just couldn't afford to have that much time off because obviously I had a little kid. I can't be at all the time with some new guy on my own. Like it just was impossible. So I was just like, hmm, do I prepare him for this or not? Obviously not. I just dropped the bomb, like, get ready. In a few hours, we're going to meet my family. And believe me, he was in shock. Like, he was absolutely sweating. He was just, I, I will always remember that. He was sitting on the sofa. And I was just saying to him, like, 
are you serious? Like, are you dead serious? Like, we, I can't, I can't. Oh, it, was, it was just funny. But yeah, like, again, for context, guys, like, you basically, you come in to meet someone's parents that, you know, yet obviously don't know full well whether this is going to, like, go into a relationship or not. And you come into, like, a household where everyone's speaking a different language <laughs> and you're like, what the hell is everyone saying? They've all got, like the Russian face on them, which is just like stone face, just like, I was like, Mafia is, face. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> is your dad like pissed off at something? Like, Not I was already. like, why is it so serious, you know? <laughs> and I just didn't understand the culture at that point, why everyone's like face is just like that. But once you spend a bit of time in Latvia, you kind of can see that like, it's just normal to be looking like that <laughs> yeah, whereas absolutely. like you know absolutely especially in the croatian side of things everyone's smiling and stuff like that so it's a lot warmer but yeah it was uh it was it was crazy and like christiana just mentioned like she had her own child and at that point in my life i didn't want a child myself never mind to take someone else's on so this was one of the like the biggest things for me because I liked the girl like a lot, but I didn't know whether I was ready to take on someone else's child as well. So yeah, that was a, it was a super difficult for me, super difficult. And did it take a long, it did take a while, quite a while to, yeah, to kind of decide, decide. Basically. Yeah. Basically to, you know, because it's uh, you have to decide quickly as well, because obviously if you're dating someone with a child, you know, they can't get used to you and expect, like, make you think that, like, you know, you have some tie with them and then you just disappear. So at that point, it's sort of like, you know... You it's either, just like a double responsibility. Yeah, you either commit to this or you don't because, like, if you, you know, if you don't fully commit, like, straight away, you, you'll be ending up breaking two hearts in the end. So Aww. it's like, uh, yeah, you have to seriously think about it. And at that point, like, I was... I was, like, obviously dealing with uh, a lot of mental health issues during, like, leaving my job, like, leaving my business. Obviously, it was going through COVID times as well. I was dealing with anxiety issues before COVID, but COVID made it worse. And then, obviously, leaving my business, it made it, like, even more, like, worse, like, my anxiety to the point where sometimes I was waking up most days with panic attacks and I developed, like, a worse and worse social anxiety to like even see people, I even towards sort of like the end days of my like work, like the last year, I had an apprentice and I remember I would be too like socially anxious to talk to the customer. So I would send the apprentice to talk to the customer for me. So this was the kind of state I was in. So obviously I had a lot on my plate and then I sort of had this on my plate as well, where I had to make like a decision. But at that point, my life was so uh, unstable in so many different ways that I was very confused about everything. And it was it was a very tough time for me in general, just kind of because this was the time to find myself, really, this to actually be myself and to finally figure out what life means to me and all these things were thrown at me at the same time it was tough it was tough and audrey as well like immediately no, my daughter as well like she immediately immediately accepted the shunt. like we all were in shock in my family like how much she like how to say it like Con not connected but like, like warm to me i don't know she was she, yeah she was just uh, like straight away like in like cuddling with you i would just remember my parents sofa like she straight away went into your like armpit and we were just all like frozen i just remember looking to her mom looking to her dad and it's like oh, what the hell just happened and it makes me emotional now and i remember the emotion and everything but it was just it was a magical moment, and at that point, I think we all realized something a little bit. Obviously, it was scary, because we both didn't know at the time. Is this serious or not? But I couldn't, I just couldn't. Obviously, as he was coming for three weeks, he, he was staying around my house, and I couldn't basically tell, like, not to be with my child. Like, it's just not possible. 
because obviously you know, for one two nights yes my parents uh, took her over and then she had to come home as she's used to her routine and everything and it was just it was it was heavy period for us but I think we dealt it with the best way possible and in a way Audrey like there is interesting thing about two of them Dushan and Audrey they both needed each other for massive massive life growth like and I needed to see that because obviously I needed to see that there's someone who can support my daughter as a dad like give all that and in the same time we should grow in absolutely like different person like the way how Audrey changed him like more patient more more loving like all these like beautiful things the child gives Right, right, and in the end of the day, like we, I just remember myself and Dushan talking about this. Like, it feels like this has this has been like it forever. Like we have raised her together, everything together. Like the she's basically our own child, not like me and Dushan. But, but yeah, it was it was magic what happened at the time. But yeah, then uh, just to kind of backtrack a little bit on Latvia, like spent a lot of time we traveled in various different places around Latvia my first thoughts as like a typical Englishman at that point was probably not the best thoughts on Latvia you know I kind of had some initial thoughts that it was like going to be kind of like you go fully back in time where it's very very poor and people I know like I've obviously spent some time in Croatia and like Serbia and stuff like that. So I've kind of seen how people live there. And I thought it might be like similar or worse than it was in those kind of like Balkan countries. And you thought it would be cheap, like proper cheap. Yeah, and I thought it would be like really, really cheap. And then I went there and I was like, what the hell? Like, you know, some things are like further like ahead. Like the professionalism and stuff in like Latvia is like ahead of England, I would say. And you know, people with, like, aesthetics and all this kind of stuff. It was, like, you know, far beyond England. So I was just, like, hold on a second. Like, I wasn't expecting this. And then, like, you know, all the houses are all different. They all look nice. Like, all the countryside is beautiful. Like, you've got the sea there as well. And, like, I don't know. Everything about Latvia was, like, really, really nice when I spent the time there. And I was, like, amazed. I was, like, wow, this is a really great place. The one thing that I didn't warm to so much was the the people in general. They were a little bit... Well, like I said, like people are quite cold, but I guess they're cold until they sort of really get to know you. So, I don't know. Yeah, we like to keep ourselves distant. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to open. Like, okay, people who travel more outside Latvia, like, are used to changing their circle, going out. Like, it, yes, it's fine. But I think it's a big thing as well when you have to start to speak in Latvian different language on top of it as well. Right? Because we're all are shy, we don't forgive ourselves mistakes. Like we're that type of culture. Always everything in Latvia has to be perfect, even when it comes to simple talking. Like. But yeah, we, um, I left Latvia and I went back to uh, Croatia. We went together. Oh, yeah, we went we together. We drive together, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, so we uh, did a, another road trip. So obviously I did that road trip from UK to Croatia, which took about 24-hour drive. And I did that was the first time I drove in, Cro in Europe by myself. So I remember I got thrown out on France from the from the Euro tunnel, and it got like it sends you straight on the motorway, and I was like, holy crap, like this is scary. It was dark, and I'm on the other side of the road, and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we did this road trip from Latvia to Croatia and obviously it was easier this time because we split it up and it was around 22 hours yeah something like it. yeah so it was like 22 hours road trip and with the break in Poland I can't even remember where we stopped yeah, now yeah, but Poland. probably Poland yeah, we stopped we there because that's the that's usually the cheapest and best bang for your book place to stay um when you're traveling from Latvia Mm. So it's like Latvia, Lithuania, then it's Poland, then it's Czech Republic, Austria, o Austria, Slovenia. Slovenia, then Croatia. Yeah. And you don't want to stop in Austria. <laughs> Trust me. Expensive. Mm. Um, so anyway, yeah, we uh, we got to Croatia. I showed her around the sites. 
obviously you your you and your family have spent quite a lot of time in Italy and you had your heart set on moving to Italy at yeah. some point yeah um but then like what were your feelings when you first came to like Croatia and saw like when I took you around and saw some of the sites like the national parks and stuff like that yeah getting back to the Italy First of all, yes, I was like 100% sure I will move to Italy because like we really travel, we we travel everywhere in Europe actually except Croatia, which was weird as well, like it felt like absolute destiny when I met Dushan and he was like Croatia, Croatia, Croatia and I was like yeah fine let's go, but yeah I wanted to go to Italy first like as for my base in the future in life where to live as I had some family friends there like they would help me out with settling in and everything with a kid and la 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 and yeah but that plan got completely cancelled when I entered Croatia Dushan started to take me around I started to like felt the culture the slow life how hospital are people here like everyone younger older whatever right and oh, and all the Adriatic coast and just all the national parks like we went to Kirka, we went to Roshki Slab, like everything. Obviously, what helped as well, like I was high on love drugs, right? <laughs> like completely, and that just obviously you have your pink glasses on, everything's beautiful, everything's perfect. That's how I felt at the time. Like I couldn't find any issue in Croatia at the time. Because we weren't dealing with anything then and as well. I just came basically as for a holiday for two weeks. And then, then, yeah, and it was amazing. And like I said, oh, and the food, the food. When I tried Croatian food, guys, oh my God. Like, the best thing ever. And as well with um, seafood, their barbecues, oh, their pecoras, you just name it, right? So it was just amazing, the best beaches, the best sunsets, sunrises, oh, just the nature, the air in here as well, like the nights when the skies are so clear that you can see everything, right? So I don't know, I just didn't have any bad thing to say and I was like, and I knew what the traditions plan to move here, like for life, to settle down and just like living this nice life and I was like yeah I'm just like I'm ready like you just make let me know when you make your decision like and I think during that three weeks like we still hadn't like basically decided stated that we were in a relationship yeah, yeah, but yeah. she'd already like pretty much moved some of her <laughs> stuff in she'd like bought some furniture for my dad's house and stuff I needed her to like, put my stuff here. You know? I don't know if my dad was still staying there or whether he'd gone back to England. No, he was in England. Yeah, he was in England at the time when I ah, came yeah. down. So yeah. we were like, yeah, I think he was planning to stay there for like a year or something. So he but said something like, changed, yeah. he was like, yeah, you know, enjoy the house for a year or whatever while you find your feet. And um, yeah, so she'd already like brought quite a lot of stuff in the car and <laughs> bought like a umbrella big umbrella what do you call it sun sun umbrella I don't sun know, yeah. umbrella, yeah, sun umbrella and yeah. like a little sofa thing or sofa. One? sofa yeah so i was just like i don't know this is a bit like too much like she's already sort of moving herself in and this that and the other you know typical bloke and i was like oh god i've really got to make my decision you know still got to make that decision yeah it was it was scary at the time but in the same time i just i just felt yeah, so just right exciting right obviously it was exciting and it was scary because we still didn't know look at you didn't know i know everything so <laughs> so it was it was it was just like i will just push my buttons i know he's right for me i know i'm right for him we were like you know like how we love to say like a hand with a glove you know just fit perfectly right and i but i just knew his mindset and i knew how is it and i know and i respect that how relationships go for instance in england everything takes time we're in latvia like shook shook and marry get kids get house like everything's in on speed like you have you want to do these things quickly you want to find that perfect person for the rest of your life blah blah things right 
So yeah, and I, I just knew, like every bit in my whole body said that this is it. Like this whole thing here sitting next to me, they're like, that's it. But he just needed like that process of a mind where like, but even like now, like if I'm like hot headed and just like, deal, deal, let's do this, like let's do it now, blah, blah. Then Dushan is always the one who likes, no, oh, let's plan this out. Let's put it on a paper. <laughs> that yeah. kind of guy and it just but in like, the end when like i don't know i've thought about it too much then i am kind of like foot on the gas so yeah that's tell them about like when you had to leave those so after those three weeks she had to oh, obviously go back to Latvia. alone driving with my car i had four by four car as well like it's not just a little, little thing you drive <sighs> that was heartbreaking guys Okay, let's go. Let's get back to my one of the worst days of my life. <laughs> it honestly felt like the worst. It was early, early morning. It was like 4 a.m. Uh, and it was a rainy day. It was like a heavy rain, just like my eyes. It was heavy rain. And like, it, it was just heartbreaking. Like, I didn't want it to leave him, like, there alone in this perfect country with just, like, the perfect wives and me just going to some depressive Latvia at the time. <laughs> and I was just like, no, how can you do this to me? Come with me. But obviously, like, he just couldn't. And I had to go back. I couldn't stay longer as well. I still had my studies going on. I had my job. I had my kid and all the body responsibilities which you get. Oh, and yeah, and then I started my long, long journey back to Latvia, which is 22 hours at least, yeah, um, alone, driving through day through night. I was absolutely against to take like these, uh, no, to sleep a night over in some like hotel or whatever. Or car park. I or anything <laughs> yeah oh god car park no thank you right that was me right <laughs> on the way to England. yeah okay as a guy fair enough but i just as a woman just felt like no no way i better just get in that car and just drive till you get to your home and don't get you out didn't even want to fill up right no i didn't want it to fill up but obviously it's not possible so i waited for the daytime <laughs> um i was just driving i was calculating in my mind like before dark we fill up so i can drive whole nights basically and then and, and uh yeah and like toilet if you needed toilet it was the worst thing in the middle of the night the worst thing I sit in my car, 10 times check around me and just run. Probably everyone thought I'm crazy, like everyone. But honestly, I was so scared. It was the middle of the Poland, random gas stations and just, oh, it was just horrible. And obviously I took a cry stops as well because I needed to let the heart break out of me because I, I left in the stage as well like because I didn't know am I coming back will I go drive to Latvia and he will just say like um you know I'm not quite sure about this like all the possible scenario just goes through your head oh it was it was, it was crazy I never want that day back like no <laughs> so yeah it was it was it was sad and I was just without answer because Dushan didn't still give me the answer like what does he want and obviously you as a woman think that the longer he thinks the less is the positive answer right so yeah it was heartbreaking. So this was like, what month was this now? This is still... Uh, mm, so in March you came to Latvia. So around April. You stayed for three weeks. In April, and I stayed two weeks in Croatia. So April and May, May start. April, May. So yeah, we met in January. This was April sort of thing. So then from there, you'd come back to Croatia, right? Yeah, then then I think I fly, or no, I drive. I always drive, right? Yeah, I'd always drive with the car. Yeah, I drive back again at some point, and I think you fly to Latvia again, and then we drive with Audrey, me, you to Croatia. God, it's uh, it's all so intense. It's hard to. It remember was intense. It. it was intense period. Yeah. But yeah. Um... We have anyway all the videos up somewhere. Yeah, yeah, we've got all the videos up somewhere on the For other channel the of like pretty much the whole adventure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we then pretty much decided let's, you know, 
let's go for it. Let's start living in Croatia. And we... You decided that in summer, though. Yeah, so... It was July. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That long I had to wait, guys. Yeah, so sorry, yeah. It was horrible. July, yeah. <laughs> and at that point, we were doing quite a lot of traveling as well. So we went to sort of like Italy... Yeah, we went well. to the Italy, Amalfi and everything, like together with my parents and some family friends. Then we went to back to Latvia again because I had my birthday in Latvia, which is filmed as well in my channel. So in Dushan's channel, so always go free and check it out. Uh, so yeah, we, we were everywhere, literally. We were everywhere. We were in Croatia, we were in different countries, we were in Latvia. In England, we didn't want though. We did towards the end, didn't we? So like um, that, that was, was when, when we got engaged. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. We when... she came to like England. Serbia as well. We went to Serbia with your mom oh. and all. The, your mom flew to Latvia. I met her. She met my parents. They're like that was the first time. Oh yeah, God, there's yeah, there's literally so much. So much. And, yeah, just so much. We adventures. were crazy, like, but like, I think that what showed us as well that literally we weren't even like committed to the relationship yet, but we were going through everything, everything, going through everything, and because meeting I everyone. was even in the meantime going through like divorce, like in court and everything, like it was intense period, like for me anyway and for Dushan and just like, but. Like, yeah, we, we weren't, like, said in a word, like, okay, we are a couple now, you know, right? But still, we went through everything. We tested how we are when we travel, like, through difficult situations. Kid who sometimes doesn't let you sleep nights, like, still traveling, meeting everyone. Because obviously in Serbia, it's like most of the Dushan's family. Thank God they all love me. <laughs> still do. So it was a great boost as well. And I think that Dushan, like, in the same time felt as well, like, okay, yeah. Like, she's the one. Yeah. The thing, no, that made it more, like, sure and everything. And obviously... I'm, first time I met his mom and she was like an absolute angel and all the Serbia trip as well like it was it was just perfect yeah oh bring so much memories again mm. yeah getting emotional but yeah, yeah from um from there we then went to UK and in the end of the year, I decided yeah. to like get engaged and just fully commit for it. That then. was so I was just like, yeah, December. you know. <laughs> so yeah, on the on the yeah. on the same year from meeting, I decided to get engaged because once I you know sort of committed to myself saying this is a relationship, I was like, well, might as well just get engaged. Yeah. And then at that point that we got engaged in London, um, I then decided that like okay why don't we get married but like why don't we do it like quite quickly so why don't we just get it done in may and then he turned his speed right i did it with <laughs> furniture and everything and then when he engaged it was like full speed we yeah. did uh, engagement i got pregnant after we get engaged so on a wedding i was pregnant then we bought a house in what? Okay, but like, like, let's not go that oh. forward. We still got to talk about that part. Right? But like, it was crazy. It wasn't even a year. Yeah, yeah. When we did all that. Year. But yeah, I decided to do it in like four months. And at a point, I decided to have the wedding in Serbia because most of my family were in Serbia. Um, so it only just made sense. Yeah. And you know what it's like with a Balkan wedding? It's sort of like you kind of invite 200, 300 people or whatever it is. And, uh, I think you know maybe 20 of the guests were hers and the rest were mine and it was sort of like maybe a good 40 percent of people that you've probably never seen before <laughs> so you know it's, it's one of them um but yeah it was uh it was crazy because we were trying to organize that but at the same time we were then she was then pregnant and then we were living in um one of my other family members house because my dad came back so we moved out of my dad's house and we lived in one of my family members' house. Now, my family members' house in Croatia, it was like, it's huge, right? It used to be like, it even used to have a cafe in it before before the war in Yugoslavia. And uh, yeah, I don't even know how many square meters it is. I think if I had to guess, probably like a thousand square meters, would mm. you say? Or maybe less. You mean with the land? No, I mean with all... Just a house? Like, because the house was obviously... Six, seven hundred for sure. Including for sure. those other two yeah, parts yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah okay so it's yeah as you can imagine quite a big house Master, but like Master. it was the old sort of like old ex-yugoslavian house and still some that you know linger around croatia where everyone just heats themselves by the sporet which is like you know a whole oven type wood burner stove in the kitchen so like the whole house hadn't had heat in and the only heating was in the kitchen so we had literally moved all of our beds into the room which had had this sporet in uh, wood burning stove and the wood burning stove was only a small one it only it was only small yeah it could fit in here it could yeah it could sofas. fit in between us basically it was small it was really and small. we were there through the winter and it was single glazed windows you could feel the wind the bura was so strong and it, it was like room, it was literally scary and it was coming into the room because the windows weren't you know they were old and everything and through the night i had to just keep putting wood in the fire to keep us warm in there. Oh, it was crazy period. She room. was pregnant, so she was oh. obviously very hormonal. And at that point, it was very not ideal to be staying in a house like that. But yeah, we literally, were... We sleep, we were... Literally, if we say it straight away to understand how tough it was, we were sleeping in a kitchen. Honestly. Like, it was the size... No, it wasn't even the size of this corner, but like, no. Uh, I don't know, there's some good 30 square meters in that room. No, yeah, around I mean, it. Yeah. And I then mean. there were both, like, our bed, there was Audrey's bed, that little heating thing, and a kitchen table with a kitchen. Like, everything's together. Yeah. Because we just needed to keep at least one that room in the, in, you know, like, warm. And then, okay, we had, like, separate bathroom, and it was a mission to get your, like, yes, okay. And it's always it's the most coldest yes. room in the house, right? You don't oh. want to have that shower in a, in a, in a Balkan, mm. uh, in a Balkan bathroom, right? It's like, we were putting, like, electric heaters everywhere, but, you know, in the, in the bathroom, you can't really, there's no real electrical element there, so, uh. No. Yeah, oh god, it was uh, it was freezing there. Yeah. I had one I had one point as well which was quite funny, which was um so in this uh wood burning oh, stove, no. right? Like <laughs> the following morning from using it, there was the ash that I'd taken out and at this point it was still warm, but I didn't really think about it. Now in the back of the garden, the there was basically like well, what I thought it was was just like a, you know, a patch of grass, but the grass was obviously like really high and it was dry and I just chucked the ash on it. And later on in the day, I was like, something smells like, something smells dodgy. Like, what's that smell? And uh, I, I looked, I opened the door and I looked outside and I couldn't see anything. And yeah, then because I thought, it's like behind a corner. And then I thought, okay, whatever. And then this smell consistently like pursued. And I was like, okay. So I went outside and that part of the grass or whatever was like pretty much all set on fire. And like the fire was still going, but thankfully it was in a controlled space, right? So it didn't spread. But that fire, right? I don't know what my uncle had put in that thing, but it No, must, it was compost. It was a compost yeah. heap, but it went down. I don't know how many like meters. A meter, at no, least. no, no. Further than a meter, it was almost like three meters that he'd like dug this like compost heap. And obviously, when a compost heap like sets fire, well, I didn't know this at the time, but I it was the smell was like the worst. Nothing the worst. I'd like ever smelled before. It was horrible, right? It was burning your lungs as well when you went to try and put it out but I literally emptied like literally I don't even know how many cubics of cubic of water I was like pouring onto there but it would not at any point like stop being on fire right it would like it would the flames would go but then it would be smoldering and then like I would have to get a spade and get in there and dig in and find like big puffs of smoke coming from it fill that full of water the smell was atrocious it was literally on fire for, I kid you not, like two weeks. At least. At least. And it, it, it absolutely I think that was me. our breaking point about the house in general. Like, we were already struggling big time there with all the heating, wind, yeah. cold, kid having gone on her shoulders, I'm pregnant. Like I, at that time, I wasn't even that hormonal, but it was still like heavy, just 
I think my, my hormones got to get triggered by that house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like no, it was it was crazy, but still like we ha- we handled it the best way possible. Like we didn't got in arguments or anything because of it. We were just dealing with the situation and making sure that we are just doing our best at the time. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was terrible. But it was heavy. It was really heavy. Even my mom and dad stormed. I yeah. stormed that house. So we, so we kind of thought like, yeah, we obviously need to look for a house or whatever. So we were looking. Oh, yeah. And I was looking in the Shubinska, Kaninska area, like the Jupania. Yeah, near the area. Because uh, my family were all from like the Danish area yeah. um, before the war. And so I figured like, obviously, that's the area that I know. I don't know any other areas. So like, I'm going to look for a house, you know, near there. So we were looking... Uh, on various websites and um, obviously our budget was like at a certain point because like we weren't going to get a mortgage here or whatever so we had to be something that you could buy up front basically so we were looking for something in in the budget and um, yeah I was looking around you know around Canine area you could find really cheap houses but you know, we potentially wanted to be in a in a bit of a different area because Canine was a bit like run down and stuff, and we need wanted to be maybe a little bit nearer to the sea. Anyway, we we went to Serbia and we were like I think we planned like four days there, and we wanted to plan the whole thing. So I found the venue, and we needed to find a church. We needed to sort out decorations and Cakes, cake, and everything, all yeah. that kind of stuff. What like the, all, done, all yeah. the stuff that I never realized was part of having a wedding, right? You thought, okay, get the venue, you know, pick the church and that's it. But like, there is so much to a wedding and I didn't realize. So yeah, we, we had four days and we smashed it out. We were like driving around Belgrade, like crazy people looking for like... And the, again, still pregnant. <laughs> yeah, all the right things. Uh, Through the insane traffic of Belgrade. Um, it was crazy. But during that point, like her parents were like staying around yeah because they watched audrey while we were in serbia so we can just four in four days get everything done yeah and they called us up and they said like oh yeah i think we found like a really good house and it was like in zadarska Županija, and like i didn't know anything about zadarska Županija. i've been to zadar before but obviously it was nice but i couldn't really remember much and here again was the fight between the baltic baltic like mindset and like the they're like, no, let's think about it. Like the Dushan's mindset at the time where my dad was just like, no, Dushan, we don't have time to think about yeah. it because he was like so sure that this is the perfect house and God bless him. Like it really was at the time and I'm glad he talked this into. Yeah, so he went and then obviously like the Connor bar was pretty much the selling point in this house because it was so special, you know, yeah. like all the stonework and all that kind mm. of stuff. It was like amazing. And you can still, you can like, it was the first video I put up on our channel, Life in Croatia, and you can see it, like, that's the house that we bought. And, um, yeah, like, I t- I, we came to the house, like, when we came back from Serbia, like, during Serbia, I was trying to ring the Croatian agents, they weren't picking up. Or if they did pick up, they couldn't get in touch with the, with the, the person, owner. and I was, like, in a rush to snap this up, because if we didn't snap it up, someone else would, because it only just got onto, like... Yeah. But somehow we hold the, the deal while we were in Serbia. We, we yeah. get in touch with someone. No, we didn't ha- hold any deal. No? Like, no, there was no deal held. That's why it was stressful. And then we came back, and oh. on our way back to Croatia, we didn't go back to the house. We went back here first, and we met your oh, parents yeah. straight away. Straight from and Serbia, yeah. Like, yeah, and the, the house was, like, completely unlocked. So you could roam around the house, basically. So we had a first look at it, and I was like, oh, this is like, yeah, I can see the potential, potential here. Yeah. yeah, this is, uh, I think this is it. So I had, like, a talk around with the neighbors just to figure out a few things. And we were lucky that we even met that uh, that neighbor, because there's literally one neighbor. No, like, the chances to meet yeah. someone here was zero at that time because it wasn't season not tourist season like we have one more neighbors but like they are here mostly like shortly before tourist season and that's it and just yeah, yeah. we were like super lucky that we the guy was just basically there standing it wasn't the guy that was there it was anka so like my neighbor and she like, called him then i guess yeah hold on let me tell the story yeah. <laughs> if you're not too sure on it so, yeah, I went around the neighbors and I started speaking to them and I wanted to know about the area and stuff. And she said, like, you know, it's a lovely place. It's peaceful. It's just that the wind is quite strong, which I didn't really think too much about at that point. 
anyway, so like I obviously started speaking to her. I said, like, you know, we're a young family. We're moving from a different country. We're looking to move here. We've obviously got heritage here and stuff like that. And we're really interested in the property and want to know more and want to, like, secure a deal. So she got in touch with um, basically her brother-in-law. And he came down and he came. He spoke with us and he got in contact with the, the owner of the house. And, uh, yeah, we pretty much secured a deal there and then. Uh, that was it. Like they wanted us here. So, and which was great. So we had secured the deal and, you know, the buying house process was a little bit stressful for me because I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, oh my God, you know, I've got to send this amount of money over to Croatia and I've got to like, you know, buy a house here and is it legit and all this kind of stuff. I don't know. And yeah, we, uh, we bought the house and that's where like, you know, our proper journey had begun here where we kind of started feeling settled, but we had no electrics. We had no water. And at that point I didn't really think too much about it. Like I just thought it would be sorted quickly and, uh, which the electrics kind of took eight months in the, in the end and the water really never happened, but (laughs) actually three years down the line now they are digging up the road to put us water in. So it's coming. It's coming, so that's great. In the meanwhile, we've been using the neighbor's uh, well, the neighbor's yeah. well, yeah. That's pretty much our story, kind of condensed from like the whole meeting period up until sort of buying the house and really getting committed. Because like once the marriage had happened and were committed to like, because I was just like, well, you know, if I'm taking care of one child, I might as well take care of two, right? So. I wanted to have my own as well. And, you know, it's the uh, best decision of my life, like having a family and actually being committed and like building a foundation together in a house that we can like, you know, build together and create a future with. This is like one of the biggest things I was missing and I didn't really realize. And then when I got it, it was like, like a part of me had just been filled in. Like it's a magical feeling just to know that, yes, finally, I've got some kind of stability. And finally, I've got something to build upon. And like, I'm in a place that I feel like amazing in. I'm with like a wife that I love. And I've got my kids that I really love as well. And everything is just amazing. This like Croatia itself healed me fully, you know, anxiety took like, potentially, I mean, it took like two years to fully heal. Like, I didn't think I thought that it would be honest as soon as we started to live together like properly live together that's the time when it started to shut off like no like that's it yeah it was around two years yeah yeah it took like two years and I thought like the burnout and the anxiety would kind of go kind of quickly but it it takes time like it just shows it takes time yeah it's just like okay it maybe went calmer but like came back a little bit then again off and came back a little bit until it like completely went away yeah Yeah. it's just so weird because like i take it for granted but i wake up and i don't you know i don't have that anxiety anxious feeling where i'm having a panic attack in the morning and i'm waking up normal and i just never thought that this would be a feeling again but you know once it goes you kind of take it for granted and don't really realize but and actually like yeah you had these things and there was this opposite about me i couldn't sleep before you like i was up through night i was working studies everything and as soon as i met dushan i was just sleeping all the co- like constantly he was probably thinking like what the hell is wrong with her right like how can she sleep so much but you know when you find that your person everything just feels so safe that you just you just sleep there is no stress in life like you just want to sleep you feel so calm so safe and similar probably with your anxiety as well like you finally have that person next to you who understands you and it just like there's no place for anxiety because it's just love, support, and just that safe, safe feeling. Yeah. I think that's what healed us both. Yeah, definitely. That we did. found each other. Well, we found ourselves and Croatia healed us both. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It was great for us to both escape from the countries that we were in because we were getting 
stress from both of them. So, uh, yeah, like Croatia has like been a great healing thing for us. And like, we're just, just we're just so base. in love with like living uh, here. It's amazing. So, and and I think it's a great place for kids as well. Oh yeah, it's for like, the, I don't those know. who watch with kids, like oh, and the communities you get here as well. Like, um, no, a lot of people come here exactly like families with kids. Yeah. Obviously, without as well. But like, it's great. And once you start to meet these people, you make this little community. Kids starts to get friendly and everything. So it just it's it's great. Obviously, it doesn't come easy and quick. But if you some if you obviously have someone, uh, who have like who no the one who someone who you know here already, it's easier. But we didn't have anyone, so it took the time. It took time, but it was great. It was perfect. It, I'm I'm glad it happened that way because we went through a lot, no, and we felt everything on our own skin. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right, guys, I think that's uh, that's pretty much a, a bit of a wrap up for this first podcast. <sighs> but yeah. it was uh, it was good to have a conversation, and this won't be the this won't be the last one. I um, I've I've got a few more in the pipeline for me and Christiana as well that she doesn't know about, but. <laughs> there will be um i'm hoping to have some like expat guests here just to kind of give yeah. you a feel of like what life is like here in the eyes of other people so that you can kind of get more kind of ideas of what it's like living here and yeah, like the insights yeah the yeah. insights and that's what i kind of want to like share with you guys so thank you for listening and if you enjoyed the episode please um you know subscribe and like and if you're listening to this on spotify because i hope it's on spotify as well you know start following my podcast on spotify so yeah awesome well then guys ciao ciao <laughs> ciao